What is a computer? A computer is a multi-purpose tool that you can use to do many, many things around your house and at business. And we're going to look at a more formal definition. Computers have two main components, the hardware, which are the parts of the computer that you can touch, and then the software. These are programs or sets of instructions that tell the computer what to do. You can't touch these, but they definitely do something very useful for you. There are four main hardware components. Input, you're very familiar with. Your mouse and your keyboard is how you tell the computer what to do. It is input. From there, the computer processes whatever you've inputted, and you'll see the middle block has got the processor chip and RAM, which is random access memory, or memory for short, those are both part of the processing part of the computer. That, that is where the work gets done. The output can be mostly to your monitor, but it could also be to your printer, and there are other forms of output. And then there is storage. Storage is your hard drive and things like flash memory, or your CD or DVD writer. All of these things are storage. They are places where you can permanently store data and programs. So we have the input devices, the output devices, storage devices, your hard drive, SSD, which is solid state drives these days, more the more modern way to store data, faster than a hard drive your CD, DVD, flash drives. These store software and data. And in memory, it stores software and data that the computer is currently using. That means it's busy with, the, with that data and that software right now. That The memory we also call RAM. The processor is the part that does all the work. And then we have communication devices which allow our computers to communicate. If you want to look at a simple little illustration of how input processing and output works, you can also look at how to make a cup of tea. Your input would be your kettle. And then your processing would be when you make the tea in the teapot. And your output would be when you pour the tea into a teacup. How does the CPU get its commands? You can look at this comparison which is your office desk comparison. The CPU is like you. You're busy working at your desk one afternoon. Before you can work with a book, you have to take the book out of your suitcase, which is like the hard drive, and you have to put the book on your desk. You can't work with the book as long as it's still in your suitcase. It's not going to help. So the CPU also wants the data and instructions that it's busy with to be in RAM which is like when it's on the desktop. If, as long as the, the data and instructions are, or the software are still on the hard drive, the CPU cannot talk to it directly. That, that software has to be taken or moved or copied across from the hard drive into the RAM or the memory so that the CPU can start working with it. So if you give an instruction to, your pro to send a program, to open a program to the CPU, you double click on an icon on the screen, then that gives a command to the CPU. The CPU says to then sends a request, and that program has to be loaded from the hard drive into RAM. Um, number three, the hard drive loads the program into the RAM, and then the CPU is now ready to work with the program. So programs must be loaded from the storage or the hard drive into RAM before they can be used. Data must be in RAM so it can be used. Data cannot, can come directly from storage or user input. RAM loses its contents when power goes off. So you have to save. If you know that if you haven't saved a Word document or something that you're busy with on your computer and the power goes down suddenly, you could lose everything. <clears throat> How do RAM and storage work together? Programs have to be loaded, 
or transferred from storage to memory so they can be used. Data must be in memory for the computers to work with it, and the contents of memory only become permanent when you save them. The main categories of software are that there are two main categories, your system software. This is the software which, you, which um, manages and controls the operation of the computer. You know about Windows. Windows 10 most people use now, Windows 7 or 8, and Windows is considered as system software. It actually manages the computer. It gets the computer to work. Without it, you can't use anything else on your computer. All the other little programs you use on your computer are called application software. And this is a whole set of additional programs that allow you to use the computer just to get your work done, or to play games, or to do all sorts of other things that you do on your computer. So the next few slides list the different types of application software. In the old days, people, if people wanted to write a letter, they used a typewriter. These days we use a word processor. And the most common word processor you know of is Word. So it allows you to create, edit, format and print te text-based documents. Next, we have spreadsheets. These allow you to get to do tasks based on calculations. You can also do charting and graphing with them. The next one is a database. It stores large amounts of data in an organized manner, and it allows you to manipulate and process data into information. Note that there is a difference between a database and a spreadsheet. A database is for really large amounts of data and it is more organized than a spreadsheet. They both have their different functions. Graphics and design software creates and manipulates images on the screen. There is a vast uh, array of different um, graphics and design software available. You, you, you probably use Paint, which is the one that comes with Windows, but there are a lot of very much more sophisticated ones that are available. There are photo, there's Photoshop, all sorts of programs to edit photos and um, that, that kind of program. Communication software allows the user to communicate electronically with other users on a network. There are things like Outlook, which is for emailing, and then things like Skype, which is to talk live to other people on the internet. There's Google Chat, which is quite similar to Skype. And then the last one, no, sorry, let's second last, is there's the web browser, many different kinds of web browser. You're used to Microsoft Internet Explorer or Edge as it's called now. Google Chrome is very popular. Mozilla Firefox, Apple Safari and Opera are all different kinds of web browsers. You get games, um, which are very popular. Um, these allow you to enact roles. You become a car driver, you become a car racer or a soldier, um, somebody in a game. And there are all sorts of scenarios and virtual worlds that you, you, you walk around or you move around in and you do all sorts of um, interesting things in the game. The interfaces are very realistic. If you have a good graphics card, you can totally immerse yourself into the, the pictures and almost become part of the game yourself. And it feels very real. Web authoring software is specially made to design web pages or websites. Then you get plugins. These are special little plugin programs that add extra features to software. For example, in a web browser, if you want to allow special effects, you can get something like QuickTime or Macromedia Flash Player. And often um, on the web, web um, when you're using a web browser, if you want to add multimedia, you will need a plugin. 